Good morning, you reach Gloria with Farmstead Talk and I'm here today with Hannah with Crazy Acre Farms and she's representing her state of Rhode Island today in this homesteading interview. Welcome Hannah and thank you for joining me. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's my pleasure. So you would share with the audience where they can find you on social media. You can find Crazy Acres Farm on Instagram and Facebook. Okay, very good. So tell me a little bit about yourself, where you were born, where you're currently living. I was born in Providence, Rhode Island. I'm currently living in Rockville, Rhode Island with my husband, Andrew. Okay. Um, so you're a native then. So tell yes. me a little bit about what your property looks like, the community that you live in, and what its population is there. So we live on a very wooded seven acres. We only have probably about an acre that's cleared. Um, we have all our goats, our rabbits, um, all of that stuff out in the backyard. We have a pretty decent but nice small sized house. Um, Rockville itself is pretty small. There's only about, I think, mean, just over 200 residents. Um, but Hop Rhode Island's kind of weird where they have like towns, but they're really villages inside of a larger town. So Rockville makes up part of Hopkinton, where Hopkinton is slightly larger with just over 2,000 residents. Okay. So what was your inspiration for wanting to live the homesteading lifestyle? Uh, my husband has always wanted a farm ever since he was young. He was in 4-H. His grandparents had a working farm for years. Myself, it probably didn't start until high school. Um, our church youth group leaders, they own a farm not far from us, Jubilee Farms. That's where we buy our beef from. So we spent a lot of time there in high school and being around the animals, being around the farming way of life, that kind of really got me thinking, oh, I really, really like this whole farming thing. That would be really cool to one do one day. Nice, okay. So what growing zone are you in and what type of gardening methods are you utilizing? We are in, I looked it up, I didn't even realize that was a thing. Um, we're in 6B. Okay. So and what kind of gardening methods are you utilizing? Um, this year we're mostly going to be using pots and then also we have raised beds out in the backyard as well. I'm sorry, what did you say? You're going to be using what the first method? Um, potting. Oh, potting. Okay. So we like to keep our tomatoes, um, typically our hot peppers and our herbs right out on the back deck because our back deck is right next to the kitchen. So it makes it really easy when we're cooking and stuff like that. And the rest of the stuff goes in the raised beds in the back. Okay. So are you, you what is the purpose for utilizing the raised beds? Is it the soil, the, the soil health or? It's one so that we can control the soil. Uh, my husband likes to completely mix his own soil. We don't usually like dig up soil from our backyard. He likes to do a complete controlled mix of compost, soil, nutrient mix, and all that kind of stuff. The other reason is we are right next to a couple really big ponds and our back, our whole property is on slight slant. Our house is built into the hill. So our backyard floods like crazy. Whenever it rains, it's almost like we have wetlands out there. So if okay. we were to do it right in the ground, it would just wash. It actually did wash all the seeds away one year. So okay. it doesn't work out well. Okay. So what are you going to be growing this year? This year we are doing, we've actually scaled back a little bit this year. Um, we're going to do aroma tomato, a few hot peppers, um, this Typical herbs, basil, thyme, rosemary. I think there's one or two others that my husband picked out. We're gonna be doing squash, carrots, and Brussels sprouts and bell peppers. There might've been one or two other things, but that's good. Okay. So what kind of animals do you have out there on the property? Right now, um, as for farming animals, we have eight Nigerian dwarf goats, four Flemish giant rabbits, and then we also have two companion dogs, an Australian Shepherd and a Coonhound. Okay. 
And what are the farm animals utilized for? The goats are mostly utilized for breeding, so we plan to sell the kids and milk as well. We like to make cheese, we like to use the milk in cooking. The rabbits, we again, mostly just breeding. We like to um, sell the meat, we like to sell off the babies whenever we can. Okay. If you could give advice to somebody that was moving into your state of Rhode Island that has never been there or lived there before, what kind of advice would you give them about gardening and farming? Um, my husband and I are very much figure it out yourself kind of people, but to someone who's never lived here before um, and really wants to get in to get started with it, I would say get involved with the community. Rhode Island has a huge gardening community, a huge goat raising community, and everyone is always willing to offer advice. Um, we've traded billy goats with, with other farms before. So I would definitely say reach out to one of the millions of farmers around because they're always willing to help. Is there any like 4-H clubs or organizations, like a contact point where they would be able to get started? Yep, there's a huge 4-H community around here. Yep. Okay. What is your favorite thing about homesteading in Rhode Island? I like Rhode Island, even though I grew up with dreams of leaving and never coming back. I really like Rhode Island because my husband and I like our um, privacy. So we like the fact that we can stay on our seven acres and we don't have to see anybody. We don't have to pretend that the rest of civilization is there. Um, we have plans to move to a bigger property where we can be more secluded. But at the same time, it's not like the nearest store or neighbor is 300 miles away. Like we can be as secluded as we want to, but at the same time, the beach, the grocery stores, anything we might need is still right there. So it makes it really nice. Yeah, it sounds like it's really nice. And yeah. what are your colors like in the fall? Is it very colorful? Oh, just gorgeous. Reds, orange, yellows, green still from all the pines and stuff that are around. It's absolutely gorgeous in the fall. And you said you have a wooded lot, so your property must be very pretty in the fall. Oh, um, yeah. Regarding that, you said that so much of your acreage is wooded. What are your plans for? So we plan, we don't plan to clear too much out of it because we don't plan to stay here and we want a good size yard, but we don't want to overwhelm the new buyers with this huge yard that needs a lot of maintenance and work to it. But we do plan to clear out um, a little bit more to make more room for the animals that we want. We did pigs before, we want to do pigs again. Um, we're hoping to add chickens soon. So our plan is to take down just a few trees um, and as many of those trees as possible, we plan to utilize and repurpose here on the farm, whether it's me building something with them or us getting them milled down and used for either structures for the animals, fencing for the animals, anything like that. Okay. That sounds like a good plan. Um, what other type of sustainable practices do you utilize in your household? Um, we're still working on setting reliable patterns that we constantly follow, but we're always looking to reduce plastic as much as possible. All of the manure our animals produce, from the goats to the rabbits, it all gets cycled back into our garden. Um, we try to utilize as much of each animal. So my husband and his father like to go hunting. And so when they go hunting, we like to use the bones for stock. We keep as much, we utilize as much of the meat as we can. Um, and then my husband plans to get into tanning so that we can now continue using the hides as well and not just wasting that. We feel like it's really important with farming and hunting to absolutely utilize as much of the animal as possible so that we're honoring it. Um, we don't have kids yet, but when we do, we plant a cloth diaper. Um, one, because it's a lot cheaper. Two, because of the waste. Um, yeah. We like, you know, uh, the biggest thing, obviously, is we plan 
and we want to constantly be growing as much of the food that we consume as ourselves. We like to, we still right now buy a lot from the grocery store because our garden is kind of touch and go. We haven't quite gotten it set and ready and stable. But in the future, our plan is to be growing and raising as much of the food as we consume as possible. Very good, very good. Does spirituality or religion play a role in your um, homesteading lifestyle at all? Most definitely. Um, my husband and I are both Christian. We both believe in the saving power of Jesus. Because of that, um, we like to be good stewards of the earth. We like to take care of the earth. Um, we also like to honor the animals that God has blessed us with. We believe that they are his creation. We believe that the earth is his creation. And with that, we want to do it as much justice as we can, basically. Um, we also, we usually have way more meat and vegetables than the two of us can consume. And because of our belief in Jesus, it's very important for us to be helping others and to reaching out to others. So with any of the excess, we are always giving it away to family members. If we know of other people who need food, um, we're usually aware of like, hey, we have plenty of meat, feel free to come get it. Or we have plenty of vegetables, we have an extra. We always have excess green beans. My husband plants so many green beans, we always have excess green beans. So I'm always trying to figure out how to get it, give it to other people so it's not just going to waste here. Very nice. Where do you and your husband see yourself in the next five years with your homestead? Um, in five years, we're hoping to be on a larger property or closer to buying a larger property. So let um, me ask you, so right now you have seven acres. Why, why the desire to go bigger? Um, one, because we don't feel like can like completely deforesting this property. Um, where it is, it's heavily wooded everywhere and we are trying not to disturb that as much as possible. Um, again, my husband also really likes to hunt. So he would like to have a good amount of woods where he could hunt. Um, I see. The other thing is we are hoping to expand our farm I would like to one day be home on the farm all day, every day. So we're hoping to grow our goat herd. We're hoping to grow our rabbits, hoping to get chickens, hoping one day for ducks. Um, we would like to have the space to continuously be getting pigs. So it's not like, oh yeah, we did pigs that one time, but now we suddenly had to rearrange the farm and we don't have space for them anymore. Um, we do have plans also to build, to hopefully build a second structure for maybe his parents or maybe mine so that they have a place to go and that kind of thing. Very nice. Very yeah. nice. Sounds like a great plan. So um, if you can, in your own words, sum up in one word what your homesteading experience has been to you thus far, what would that word be? It. I thought really hard about this because I didn't think it was going to be a difficult question to answer, but it really was. It's kind of a weird answer, but the word that I kept coming back to was closer. You want to elaborate on that a little bit? Um, I feel like, because my husband and I, we're still pretty new at this. We only started a couple of years ago with a couple of goats. Um, but over these couple of years, I feel like doing the homesteading as much as we have been, I feel like it's brought me closer to God in my relationship with him, learning more about his creation, learning more about how to care for all these things that he's so beautifully created. Um, I feel like it's brought me closer to my husband. We have had to work through many problems on many projects together and it's taught us how to work together. Um, and how to be happy with just the two of us. So it's brought me closer to both of them. And it's also brought me closer to myself. Um, I feel like I've finally found what I really love in the homesteading, in the woodworking that I do as a result of the homesteading. Um, yeah, I feel like it's just brought me closer to a lot of things and the three main relationships throughout my life. I feel like it's brought me closer. 
Thank you for spending time with me today on this interview. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It was fun. Absolutely. Have a great day. You too.